Thank you very much for the possibility to meet with you today. It's my honor and privilege to have the possibility that uh, uh, throughout the uh, uh, the framework of the uh, of the official visit to, to, to Budapest to Hungary, I have the possibility to talk to the business community about current and potential investments, about the enhancement of economic cooperation. Because uh, today, uh, I signed well, earlier today with the. With Prime Minister Orban, I signed joint declaration about the enhanced partnership in European and Euro Atlantic integration process. Uh, and uh, I'm sure that uh, uh, economic cooperation we've had between the two countries in, in previous periods should not only continue but should be expanded as well. Therefore, uh, uh, what we're trying to do is uh, something that one can uh, describe into. Uh, or, or, or explain to, to two priorities. First priority is integration process, and the second priority is economic recovery. About the integration process, I think that Montenegro has uh, moved uh, uh, forward, uh, or continued to move forward, and uh, I'm particularly thankful to the Hungarian government for supporting us along the road. Uh, in uh, both aspects, in, in the aspect of European and in the aspect of Euro-Atlantic integration process, because it enables our country to uh, uh, present its track record uh, 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 loudly uh, and uh, uh, convince our partners in the European Union and in the Euro-Atlantic family that we are building our system uh, of institutions that is uh, uh, the same sort of the system other countries in, in Europe have, as it is incredibly important uh, because of uh, the need to attain uh, stability, to attain security, and that is the necessary precondition for economic prosperity. Uh, so we hope that uh, later this month we'll be in the position to open accession talks with the European Union on chapter, chapters 23 and 24, which are usually associated with uh, efforts to battle organized crime and corruption, but in the long run, it is actually about building a system of institutions that can respond to any legal challenge. And therefore, it is incredibly important also to uh, businesses, to business community, because legal security is what uh, companies uh, want to see in a country if they decide to, uh, to invest or they're thinking about, about investing and expanding business. Uh, so we hope that uh, uh, later this month uh, we will be able to open accession talks and we hope that in years to come we'll be also able to uh, invest efforts and close chapter by chapter and eventually become member state of the European Union. We hope to continue receiving strong support of the, Euro of the Hungarian government and the Hungarian institutions because you're the ones who uh, went through the process and also Eastern European countries who are still fresh in the process can be an excellent uh, 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 partner, reliable partner that can help us uh, uh, go through through difficult uh, process of adjusting our system to European standards. Secondly, uh, as it was shown uh, at the latest uh, Chicago summit, the latest NATO summit, uh, Hungary stands uh, firmly uh, behind Montenegro supporting our uh, uh, NATO goals as it, it provides uh, an input or contribution to the stability in the region. And uh, uh, the more stability, the more uh, the, the, the safer ground for, for economic prosperity, or more st the stable ground for the economic prosperity. So the integration process, along with our recent accession to WTO, suggests that Montenegro has really advanced in terms of uh, meeting our foreign, foreign agenda. But of course, as, as uh, always, uh, a foreign agenda and internal agenda have to go hand in hand well together because the discrepancy, should there be any, cannot last for long. And uh, it is normal that uh, a foreign success is mirrored with internal efforts and internal success. So it is not only about uh, uh, building sustainable uh, uh, institutions, about pursuing political system reforms, it is also about how to boost economic recovery because our countries are all in uh, the process of seeking most uh, effective, most efficient instruments in order to support or, or bring growth back into our economies. Uh, uh, growth which is not 1% or 2% but a lot more sustainable in the long run growth and the growth which uh, will evidently 
uh, evidently bring uh, more purchase power to our people and better standards of living, better public services, which in the long run it is expected from, from any, any, any government, any country. So in the field of uh, the economic recovery, uh, I, I, I'd like to say that our economic policy is based on, on three pillars, uh, which is uh, fiscal adjustment, uh, structural reforms and improvement of business environment. The first one, the first pillar is basically fiscal consolidation, and uh, I'll tell more about that. But the second two pillars are about competitiveness policies, because we believe that it is not only austerity that brings in solutions, uh, quite actually quite oppositely, because if it is only austerity without growth, then we're going to release social time bomb and, and uh, social disruption is such a, uh, such a big uh, challenge or big danger. Therefore, we need to have both uh, hands operating if we want to see economy improving its state uh, uh, over the mid and long run. Therefore, uh, about fiscal adjustment, we've done what uh, has been necessary to do. And uh, similar to other countries, we have managed to bring public expenditures to about 40%, uh, down from 50% uh, we had in 2009. Uh, so we managed to consolidate by about 10% of GDP. And also we managed to bring our budget deficit down to about 2.5% this year, estimate 2.5% this year. Keeping public debt within Maastricht, about 50%. Uh, from the accounting point of view, uh, public uh, a budget, budget deficit may be affected uh, by certain accounting operations that may require uh, treatment of uh, guarantees. But uh, whatever uh, happens, uh, a real true deficit is 2.5%, anything else is accounting because already next year we're, we're assuming that uh, we will further bring down budget deficit as we need to, uh, we need to uh, 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 provide public debt at about uh, at sustainable level. Talking about the public debt, I remember when becoming finance minister in 2004 for the first time, at the beginning of the economic cycle, it was about 46% of GDP. Now, at the end of one and at the start of the another economic cycle, it's about, again, 46% of, of GDP, uh, with our assessment that uh, probably 50% is, is the, uh, uh, the maximum tolerated level of, of the public debt. Because according to the strategy and uh, midterm budget framework, we expect to see public debt dropping to about 42% in the next three to four years. So in 2016, 2016, we expect the public debt will be brought back to 42%. <clears throat> That's inevitable, uh, an inevitable part of the economic policy because, uh, uh, I mean, both Montenegro and Hungary are in the same position. Unless we do it, uh, we risk uh, uh, restrictions at the capital markets. And actually the biggest danger for small countries uh, uh, micro and small countries is inaccessibility of the capital markets. Uh, so the problem is not the level of budget deficit, problem is actually not the level of public debt, Pro problem is about providing finances to, uh, to keep your system up and running. And uh, that's why we need to pursue uh, policies of fiscal adjustment. Uh, so recently, as, a, as, a, as an assessment, we received uh, one good and one bad news. Uh, 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 good news is that Moody's has kept our credit rating stable, uh, unchanged, contrary to more or less all the countries in Europe. But unfortunately, Standard & Poor's has decided to, to grow, downgrade via double B minus now, but outlook is stable. So in principle, that's the same, same level of credit rating. And uh, regardless of the, uh, the, the recent assessments, uh, one good, good one by Moody's and uh, less good one by, by Standard & Poor's, I think it reflects all the efforts we have been investing into sending good, uh, uh, sending good messages to our investors and to ge in, in general financial community. Uh, but, but it has to do also with competitiveness uh, policies. And that's... Uh, the, that's the field of structural reforms and the business improvement reforms. On the structural side, I think we've done also a lot. We have uh, reformed the pension system. We have introduced uh, 67 as retirement age. We have changed the form formula by which pensions are, are indexed. And we have also introduced some uh, additional restrictions into the system because we need to contain the the public pensions costs and we assess that in time to come 
uh, 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 the cost of uh, public pensions into GDP should, should drop as a consequence of, of the reform. Also last year, we, we uh, revisited uh, labor reform. And uh, though it was done through a difficult social dialogue, uh, which assumes uh, consensus of social partners, I think uh, uh, at, uh, in, in the end we managed to reform some uh, rigid elements of, of the labor law uh, by trying to strike better uh, 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 balance between uh, flexibility at the labor market, the need to, uh, to respond to the market uh, volatility, and uh, uh, security of, the, of, of, of jobs, which is something that normally trade unions are most interested in. We're currently preparing uh, a social protection uh, reform, uh, also to introduce more active uh, approach, more active policies, as we are aware that uh, structural changes in the long run are about competitiveness and the more activity, uh, the, uh, the more incentives to the people that they are active participants at the labor market, the better in the long run. About improvement of the business environment, we have also tried to do uh, uh, a lot and uh, currently we have under implementation a number of different pieces of legislation which are uh, aiming at improving the procedure of obtaining business uh, license, uh, registering business, uh, closing business, uh, obtaining construction permits, exiting contracts, and so on. We have uh, improved our rankings in basically all uh, the international indicators. Uh, currently, we stand at the 55th position and doing business uh, of the World Bank. We hope to improve it further this year. But also, when you look at Transparency International Index, when you look at uh, uh, United Nations uh, Human Development Index, when you look at World Economic Forum, uh, uh, economic freedom uh, levels and so on, uh, 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 Freedom House and so on, so it seems that we have managed to improve our rankings through all those, uh, all those indicators. Of course, it doesn't mean that there are no problems with the implementation of legislation. It doesn't mean that, and I'm not trying to suggest that uh, companies are not facing with certain difficulties, but I suppose uh, that um, we we can uh, provide instruments and respond to uh, any issue uh, that may be open or to help businesses or investors tackle any issue that may be open. And for that purpose, and also for the purpose of uh, 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 helping or facilitating investors, uh, we have uh, reformed the cabinet uh, a little bit, and uh, now there is special secretariat for development projects, which stands ready to act as investors' advocate within the government. Because sometimes we understand that uh, uh, that investors are interested about investing in Montenegro. Uh, after a while, you come to a point in which you sign some agreement or contract. But after that, if it is about development projects, sometimes there is a lot of uh, difficulties in. Uh, uh, talking to the administration, ministries, local administration, so on, and the purpose of this secretariat is actually to meet the needs of, of, of the investors, to facilitate the process, because sometimes uh, it is, for the foreigners, it might be difficult to understand the environment, like, for example, Montenegro investor may come to Hungary and, uh, you know, not, uh, uh, and, and it may take them a while f to understand, really, uh, all, all, all the practices. So. What we are actually talking about is how to boost investments, because for a small country it is, it is uh, uh, vital to uh, uh, have uh, a new wave of investments in Montenegro. That's the only way to bring growth back to some decent levels. And we're talking about potential investments in the, uh, in the area of uh, tourism, but also in the area of energy. Uh, agriculture, uh, but we also believe that uh, industrial production has future uh, in Montenegro. Recently, we've been very encouraged by the takeover of uh, the steel mill by the Turkish uh, Turkish big investor, and uh, we hope that uh, investments that will amount some 30 to 40 million, uh, uh, complementary to already invested money, could really bring some new added value to, to the steel mill and industrial production in Montenegro. But there is also aluminium plant, which is under restructuring, and uh, uh, there are some open issues that need to be, need to be addressed, as uh, we are now uh, in the process of divorcing with the current uh, investor and also in attempt to find another, uh, another potential investor for the aluminium, aluminium business.
Uh, I have to say that I'm, I'm very happy, very pleased with the participation of Hungarian investors in Montenegro. Uh, 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 Hungarian investors have uh, been, uh, 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 I should say, a cornerstone of the uh, of the business, international business presence in Montenegro, uh, showing the light to many other, uh, uh, many other countries, many other investors, and uh, it is uh, it is also evident that Hungarians' investments in Montenegro are very diversified. Uh, for example, if we're talking about Italy's presence, which from the um, uh, the recent amount of investment may be may be the top uh, because of the energy. Uh, but it is only energy. It is not banking. It's not T-com. It's not uh, uh, hotels and, and other businesses. Uh, and it, it the same could be applied to other uh, to other countries. Therefore, Hungarian investors uh, remain incredibly important partner to Montenegro, and we hope to work together to try to expand <coughs> expanded presence. I know about some uh, recently expressed interest about investments in in, in uh, different uh, areas. We. Uh, are in uh, touch with the OTP, for example, because there are some open issues that we have to address, and as government, we're trying to help. But uh, in any other case, uh, we stand ready to, to take part in the process, help, uh, and uh, we understand it is it should be in mutual interest. Uh, that that's the only uh, that that's the only formula that leads leads to success. So I, I think I should stop here, uh, unless I'll make it a monologue, which I definitely don't want it to be. Uh, I'd like to actually listen to you, hear your views, and uh, answer if uh, there might be some questions to, to be answered. Thank you very much.